ladies of el salón the chronicles oh yeah ladies of el salón the chronicles so, Let's go ladies of el <laughs> so i just wanted to say on what you just said you know growing up a lot of girls grow up with a, a, a having that masculinity in the home like for me i grew up with a dad who was extremely strict i mean to the next level strict i was not allowed to look out the window because only whores look out the window um at the age of eight i had to go into the kitchen and at the age of eight i had to go into a kitchen and learn how to cook um because what was I your was, brother doing while you cooked nothing nothing yeah for he just sure. needed to worry about studies he just needed to worry about studies and you know but my, my dad was just you know, I love him to death, um, but he was very toxic. He was a very toxic person yeah. growing up. So, you know, then I, I was not allowed to have friends over. I was not allowed to have male friends. Mm -hmm. Women don't have male friends. No. Los hombres no son amigos de mujeres. No. You know, there was always like that other thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when I started to date, I did not know what I was looking for in a man. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I was insecure of myself. I didn't know how to behave in front of a man because I felt that if I did too much, then I was leading the man on into something that was not good. Or, you know, it's just I didn't want to open up to a man because I never was taught to open up to a man. So I was very sheltered, very, you know, um, very insecure. So my first relationship was horrible, it was a horrible relationship. And then I kept it to myself and I went through a lot because of the upbringing that I had in my home. So I think it's very, I think it does start at home. I think the experiences you have as a child kind of mold you both male and female because I allowed men in my life to get away with a lot of shit because of the fact that that was how my father was. So it was normal to me. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, this is how a man is supposed to behave. And when I found my voice and I started speaking up, then it became a problem because now I'm that woman who, mm -hmm. oh, you complain too much. Oh, you speak up too much. Oh, you have too much to say. Oh, you're never happy. So where do you find that happy medium? You know, where is it that, where's your place, so to speak? You know, like where, where do you meet someone and have that common ground where, the man is being a man, protecting you and being there for you, but also having that nurturing side. And where, as a woman, do you like? Where where are you happy? You know, it's like it's it's a very it's a very gray area. Gray like area. You don't you don't totally. know. You don't you don't really know. You know how, how do you find that perfect puzzle, that perfect piece that makes you happy and 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 you don't feel like a man is always you know running your life i don't know it's well, just like it's for me i'm still figuring well out. how can how can women support men that are <laughs> evolving into non-toxic males yeah i mean i think oh, do you want me to answer or you, you were going to say something yes further? please oh no, oh, no, I, no, I, no. I, th I think it's base i think it's i think well number one i think it's what Zuli said as well i think it's directness like, I think, you know, if you're in your early 20s and you're just chilling and having fun, that's a different story, right? But, like, I think when you're, when you're, whatever age you may be and you're, like, ready, like, you know what you want at this point. Like, I, I've been dating, I've been doing this, I've been through great relationships, bad relationships, they didn't work out, but now I want to get married and all that stuff. I think it's, number one, about being direct and really kind of... I'm I'm really big in just kind of like studying a person, not like in a really like stalker way or like weird way, but more like trying to understand where they have the most capacity, right? Like really just trying to be like, all right, like I'm asking you for these five things and you tell me like where, what's going to be the hardest for you? Like, like what's going to be like really the hardest for you? Like these are the five things I need in a relationship. And you know, if that person is willing to work with you, as long as you know, like, yo, Number four, number four is hard as fuck for me, but I'll try, right? And that's where you gotta allow for grace, right? But then that's um, where you do the it same together. Time, you gotta, at, you, yeah, that's when you're doing it together. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I think that's that's kind of that's kind of what it has to be. Like, I don't think it's gonna be any other way. Like, um, I remember I was dating a girl when I was single a few years ago, and um, to to what you were kind of saying um, earlier, she. I met her and she just came out of like a 13 year marriage. She was, she got married at 19, right? And she got married at an extremely young age, two kids, whatever, great, great woman, right? Just didn't work out. And um, I remember when I was like, I don't really kind of want to do this, you know? Um, I remember after like we, we spoke and she was like, hey, like, 
to what you were saying earlier on how like your your experiences and your childhood can affect you she was just saying like hey like you know i was with the same man for 13 years and i was used to the same type of love and i mimicked that love because i didn't know how to love up, up until that point so i knew i learned how to love from this man starting from the age of 19 ending at 32. so essentially what what you were bringing to the table was some shit that i couldn't even fuck with at that point because it seemed too direct it seemed too like tell me what you're feeling because i'm i'm not trying to re read your mind um but i think it, i think it and and on that side it's a guy you know that side it's a guy like even if that relationship wasn't meant to be or anything it was me during that process like whatever the end result was i wasn't giving her grace i wasn't like even if she wasn't um vocally communicating what was going on internally i could have easily in my head been like i right, like this chick just came out of a 13 year relationship and she got married at 19. she got two kids like right. that shit is a lot to deal with right now and then she's just jumping into something with me and sometimes you know i think sometimes when you're emotionally in tune when you're going to therapy when you're doing the work you start you start doing it so much that this shit becomes easy to you but it's not the same for everybody else right so the shit that right. comes easy to you wasn't some shit that was easy for you four years ago you know that's some shit that you kind of built towards um so it's kind of like giving the same approach to someone else that doesn't mean you're going to give them endless rope but that does mean that you if you really do like that person and they're willing to work then you you know you, you just have to understand that there's there are going to be hiccups but if they're trying you know it, it's it may be worth it i know liz has a question i just wanted to say my my saying is always we're on the same train going the same direction just different stops well said yeah Go ahead, Liz. I'm sorry. Ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles.